So today's video will be going over version 12 of my 3D printed speaker. So we'll jump into the build and then we'll come back here and talk about some of the design changes that have happened and then we'll proceed on to the listening test and the overall um, performance graphs. So yeah, meet you guys back here. So before we talk about the build, a word about today's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay can fulfill all your custom prototype needs, whether you require CNC, 3D printing, or flexible and rigid PC manufacturing. PCBWay has got you covered. And as a special offer for first-time users, you can enjoy an exclusive $5 discount on your initial order. That means getting single or dual layer PCBs measuring up to 100 millimeters by 100 millimeters with a quantity of up to 10, starting from a price of zero dollars, and you only pay for the shipping and handling. PCB Way is renowned for their exceptional quality and top-notch customer service, as I have experienced firsthand. Visit PCBWay.com today and bring your ideas to life. Now, on with the build. Okay, now that you guys have seen the actual build process of version 12, I'll just go over some of the changes that were made compared to some of the previous versions. First and foremost, it is a modular setup, so the speaker comes apart into a lower section, a middle section, and then this top cover here. And that allows me to change out all the moving parts, the cone, the coil, the spider, and the surround. It just lets me change things and see how they affect the feel small parameters. Um, I'll put up the different ones right here, the different components that I've tested this time. It'll be a three spring, a five spring, and then a um, rubber TPU style spider. And I just did that to kind of see how it affected the TS parameters and how it affected the frequency response. And then the, um, the FS, which is just like the natural resonant frequency of the speaker. So other than that, there wasn't too many changes to the actual speaker itself, other than it just got smaller. It uses the same version 11 uh, metal heart motor 
that I had in the last speaker. It's, I literally just pulled it off and put it on this one. And it'll still probably be used in the next one as well, except I might get a new top plate for it just to kind of bring in the clearances as I went down to a 34 gauge wire on the coil instead of a 30 gauge. I did that in the attempt to cut some more weight out of the moving mass. Um, total moving mass for this speaker is floating right around the 11-ish, 12-ish gram on the scale. The MMS of the speaker, which is I guess supposed to be moving mass as well, is floating around the 6 grams. So the speaker has gotten way lighter compared to the, late, the last all the last speakers, honestly. Um, only other thing I tried was I tried a golf ball cone with like little golf ball dimples in it instead of this flat cone just to see what it would do with the frequency response. We'll take a look at that here in a bit though. Um, I also went to a sealed enclosure. Um, no ports, no vents. It's just a pure sealed enclosure. Uh, I did that because this isn't really a woofer, so I don't need to worry too much about tuning the low-end frequency response to a certain frequency. I just contain the front waves away from the back waves and make the speaker and the box kind of compatible in size, and it should hopefully work. Um, I use WinISD for kind of modeling some of that. But yeah, those are all the changes that I really made for this speaker. So we will jump into the um, actual testing of it. And I'll put up on the screen which spider is getting tested along with which graph it corresponds to. Um, I'll kind of talk through while that's happening too. So, But yeah, that's kind of what we'll do. And then I'll meet back here to kind of tell you about the future plans for this speaker. So. Okay, so now we're in DATS, looking at the five-spoke version. Unfortunately, this test was done after it was melted, and that's what led me to go and investigate what was going on with it. First thing I noticed was that the FS was way too high. Anytime I've ever tested a speaker and it's been at 440 hertz, something has been rubbing or touching inside the voice coil. And so, unfortunately, the Moving on to the three-spoke one, though. Um, so this is the three-spoke with the golf ball in it, the golf ball cone. Um, there, Here's the parameters for anybody that wants them. Um, we can see that it's at 72.4 watts at one meter. It has an FS around 142 hertz, and then that MMS, like I was saying, is down around the 6 grams. Um, here is the regular cone with the long body. We can see that the FS is at 138, but we can see that the SPL fell clear down to 70. Um, and then if we take and put on that short body, we can see that it jumps clear up to 74.6 at one watt at one meter. Um, we can see that the FS kind of jumped a little bit too. 
So I could definitely can say that just by moving that down, I definitely gained some efficiency. And then here is the TPU spider one. Again, floating around that 72 watts at a meter. And then this one's at 180 hertz for an FS. Um, yeah, the MMS on these are down around five and a half. So this is all the DATS information for me that wants any of this. You're free to stop and um, pause the video anytime to look at any of this. Uh, moving on to REW now. So I didn't actually do this for the five spoke because like I said, it was just, it wasn't a good test speaker. So I've just thrown that one out. But this is the, um, the golf ball. The red is the golf ball cone. And then if we can pair that to the regular, we can actually see what that golf ball um, surface on the cone actually affected. We can see that it affected things down here in the low range, and then it affected things up here in the high range. So up in the high range, it seems like it was affecting some of the ability to produce some of these higher end notes, but it was helping to produce some of these lower end notes. Um, moving on now to the TPU spider. This is the TPU spider versus the three ring on the flat. So both of these are flat cones. This is just essentially a test of a TPU, which is the blue versus the PETG flat spring. And we can see that the TPU actually does let us get a little bit louder overall, like peak. Um, and it does have more low end, but as it comes up to this high end, it does kind of tend to lose out from just about 3,500 on, 4,000 on, it tends to lose out. Um, comparing that now to the short one though, we can see that by moving that voice coil into the motor, or moving the motor up into the voice coil, it's actually gained performance along almost the entirety of the um, frequency response. So. Um, comparing that to the TPU one, again, TPU down here, just, it, it really shines right there, the 1 to 10 hertz, but, I mean, that's outside of human hearing, so there's not much use for it, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, the overall loudest speaker was the short one, and it was coming in at right around 97 decibels, and this was at a 0.5 volt input on all of these, so... Yeah, so that is what I have for REW um, stuff. So we kind of looked at the graphs, um, seeing which, how these perform. Um, as you've seen, there's actually a short and a long version. And what that is, is that um, the way that I designed this, I guess I didn't take into account that the 34 gauge wire wasn't gonna come up as far onto the coil, and so I actually had to move the motor up 3.4 millimeters into the actual voice coil so that I could center that top plate on the voice coil. Um, as you've seen, that ga gained me just about two and a half decibels of frequency response just for moving the motor up three and a half millimeters, which is, I mean, that's essentially twice as efficient of a motor if we assume that three decibels is equivalent to about double the power. So it takes half the power now to make the same decibel response. So um, other than that, uh, I'm going to use the same motor going forward with the speakers. I think I'm going to stick with the smaller speaker, and I might actually stick with the same modularity of this, and I might start moving the motor around and then playing with the voice coil diameter, but as far as the overall size. I think I'm going to stick around with this speaker for a little while. I might even reuse the same um, stand and box here for the speaker if it stays dimensionally pretty well the same. So yeah, that's kind of where the speaker is going to be headed. Um, I need to get some more magnets and then I'm hoping in the next version or two to actually make a stereo pair so that I can actually use them as a stereo setup as 
I tend to use these for about a week before I make the video to make sure that they play right, that there's no overheating of the voice coils, um, nothing like that. I will say that this one will not take the heat like some of the previous ones, as I did melt a voice coil on the five spring during testing. Um, I can put up a video here or something of just a picture of it being melted. It's It didn't hold up very well to 45 watts of power. So if you do build this, be weary of using PLA as plastic, as that's what I was using. Um, I would recommend going to a PETG or an ASA if you want to try bumping up the power on it. But I just wouldn't recommend running more than maybe 2 or 3 watts to these, as these are all basically thermoplastic components and they are not fire safe. So yeah, beyond that, um, that's all I have for you guys. So